No. It's you risk don't have or stratego. Resources and risk. That's true. That's true. You don't have resources and risk or stratego. What am I yeah. talking about? We're going to start things off with a mechanically speaking, and I have a little bit of bad news for you. Oh. Sorry. Uh, sad news indeed. Um, the very legendary game designer Klaus Tuber unfortunately passed away this last week. And in case you don't know who Klaus Tuber is, he made this game called Catan, originally Settlers of Catan. Um, I don't know if you've ever played Catan yourself. I think a couple times, yeah. Okay. Uh, but it was uh, released back in 95, I want to say, and has been awarded, oh, geez, um, Game of the Year, Hall of Fame, Game of the Century honors in Germany and the United States, uh, been called the perfect social game, and you've probably seen it on basically every store shelf if you've been in the game aisle in the last 20 years. The general rule set, in case you're not aware, is basically a resource management game where you use uh, a variety of like five different resources in order to build roads and towns and cities and an army and everything and try to score more points than everybody else get to 10 victory points and you win it's actually far simpler than it probably looks by the board if you look on the back of the board <laughs> it looks it looks a little bit complex but it's really not i will say that it is not the first experience with Catan that i had the first experience with Catan that i had was this, the Catan yes. Dice game. This is actually the first thing that I played, and that made me want to play this game. So, uh, in honor of Klaus Tuber and the very legendary game that he made, I actually wanted to talk a little bit about how those mechanics translated from the original game to what it became with the Dice game. So, I'll just kind of go over the basic rules. Basically, oh, you, you, have, you have this board. I'm going to put it up in front of my face because everybody appreciates that. It's much more yeah. interesting to look at. Um, I'm sure you can't just find a graphic to put over the screen right now. So I could fine. do that too, but I have the actual box, so I mean, let's take, let's use it. Uh, but anyway, so what you have is uh, basically a hexagonal board where you have several different kinds of resource tiles and they all have different numbers. And what you would do on your turn is you would roll a die and whatever number comes up would actually determine which resource tiles uh, generate resources and players that have towns around them would then get those resources that they could use on their turn and then there's a certain resource cost for building towns converting them into cities making you know roads etc so there's a little bit of luck involved because rolling the dice is chance but considering that you're rolling the two you do still have a bit of a bell curve in terms of the likelihood that things are going to show up uh you uh you have like the most likelihood of rolling like sixes and sevens i want to say uh because obviously you know, you know how bell curve probability works yeah yeah exactly yeah, yeah you have you have two dice you, you the the mean average of it is probably what you're going to get more often than not so you know certain resource tiles are usually a little bit more uh useful than others and so the way that you end up playing is that you have these cards in your hand these resource cards and you have to utilize them to build over the course of the game so what happens when we do a dice game we don't have the board right. obviously what we have instead is let me see if i can show you we have this pad of paper okay and this pad of paper is supposed to be essentially representative of your board mm -hmm. and then up in the top instead of getting to 10 victory points you have this little graph where you can write in the number of points that you get each turn until you get to the end and you uh, calculate up your score, and then the person with the highest score wins. So okay. we've we've gone to basically a turn-based combat scenario. Um, I combat, huh? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, there's no combat in in Catan. I should have. I think it would be more interesting if there was. You could have your knight's army combat the other knights. At, at, well, See other resources. Aren't we basically just making Stratego now? Sure, we're just doing Raiders of Catan. So basically, risk. No, it's you risk don't have or resources and risk. 
That's true. That's true. You don't have resources and risk or stratego. What am I yeah. talking about? The second one is more like a classic kind of victory point scenario where you uh, where you circle the resources that you want to get and uh, get points for largest army. And the thing that I think is really interesting, though, is the resources, because now we're basically doing this thing where we're rolling dice. That's why it's a dice game. They're going to look very similar to the resources of Catan. You've got your wheat and your wool and your bricks and your lumber and your ore. But then you also have this little sixth one right here, which is gold. So the gold had to get added in because there really are only five resources in the game that you're supposed to utilize in order so to So they needed buy a sixth resource to utilize the six out of dice? The way that the gold, though, gets utilized is if you have two gold, when you roll your dice, you can use that as basically a wild card resource. So if you've gotten two gold, you can use it for whatever resource you want. It's sort of like a resource. Three card. gold. You, 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 no, you can only have one. What if I roll Yati of gold? Well, then technically you have three wild card resources. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. But it's interesting that you say Yahtzee, because it's actually very much based on that. You roll your oh, dice. Oh, okay. Yeah, you roll your dice, and then you get to choose which ones you keep, and roll the other dice, and you do this the three times. And then after you've gotten your third roll out of the way, you then look at your dice, and you determine if there's anything that you can build that you need. Your cities, your towns, and everything, and the resource cost is right up in the corner to determine like what dice that you want. Other thing that's interesting about this too is that as you build things like your knights or your towns or anything like that, they have individual point costs. So like if I build my first town, I get like three points, but if I build my second town, I get four and then the cities go up in point costs too. That's not how the original game works. The original game, cities, towns, etc., they have a set number of victory points. Yeah. So Well, that's because you're going from having a board right to having a travel edition. We had to take out certain elements of the actual board because we wanted to have it be portable. Uh, right. because as you can tell, like carrying around this pad of paper and these dice is is a whole lot more portable and you can take it on the road than you can with uh, this box. I'm almost wondering, did they ever make a like Catan card game? I believe they did make a Catan card okay. game. Because I feel like that would, if you already had the portable version like this, I don't see a reason why you couldn't just make, instead of a board, mm -hmm. using cards, like a deck of cards, as the tiles. So there is actually a Catan card game, and then there are, oh, of course, there's seven expansions to the card game alone. There's also, I should say, a video game version that obviously looks a lot like the original. My thinking, though, on the uh, dice game is that it does a pretty good job of trying to take the basic mechanics from the board game and translate them into a new form. Uh, because you still have the resources, you still have resource management and cost that's associated with it. Uh, in, in a smaller form. I did see one of the early reviews from like 2010, I think Rebel News, was saying that the problem was that it relied too much on um, chance. Because in similar fashion to Yahtzee, you're basically relying on strictly the rolls of the die. The dice do get rolled in the main game, but I think because you have that bell curve probability and the fact that you get resources on everybody's turn, it's it's a little bit less chance-based and you can also trade with people. Generally, your thoughts, if this is the kind of thing that would make sense if you're trying to translate a board game to a card game, what do you look for when you're seeing the translation of one sort of, you know, tabletop game into uh, into another? I mean, they've pretty much dumbed it down a lot. They took the board out, they made it more chance-based than just, like, bartering. Right. And skill. The part about it being mostly by chance is legit, you know? Right. If it doesn't have any economy that is built on trading or negotiating or anything like that, 
Right. And it's all just based on dice rolls, and yeah, 100% it's by chance. So it doesn't right. make it more, it doesn't make it less fun necessarily. When it comes down to a game of chance, it's, it's roll the dice and hope you get lucky. Right. Like, in terms of the general framework of it, they took a lot of the spirit of Catan and they put it into the, the dice version. But I do think that one of the things that it might have lacked was that, as it says right here, it's been called... The original Catan board game was called, like, the perfect social game, and the social aspect of it doesn't really translate over to the dice uh, version of it. So it loses that. Um, the general spirit and framework, though, I would say does remain intact for something like the, the dice version. But if you're looking at it from the trading aspect and the, the you know, resource management and all of that, you do lose that a bit from the original game, which yeah. I, I think is, is probably the biggest uh, problem. Although, from the mechanics of the uh, consumer standpoint, here's the thing. I, as I said, I bought the dice game, played the dice game, and then wanted to play the original. So I guess what I could say is, from a, uh, a consumerist standpoint, real smart to make this dice game that looks a lot, you know, easier to understand so that people might go and buy the ba main game, because it did work for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can tell you, however, ha having played this with people who don't like rules-heavy games, um, they liked the dice game, but they seem to have enjoyed the board game version more. Oh, good. So... Did, did that help with them playing the dice game first, then? I think so. Uh, just because they were already familiar with the resources and, you know, the board, it doesn't automatically mean that you're going to know how to play the game, because I don't think the rules translate from one form to the other all that well, but at least you still get the idea that, oh, I'm collecting resources so that I can build these things, so that I can get points, so that I can get the most points out of everybody else in the game. So, I think in the general framework, it helps to introduce people, maybe with, like, the, the dice or the card game, if it's something more portable and easier to pick up. I think that whenever you're just moving from one medium to another, and I would consider board games and card games and, and dice games all very different mediums in terms of how they play, um, you are going to lose something in the translation. It's very hard to keep the same aspects of it from one to another, but if they were going to be the same, you wouldn't have a reason to change the format, so... <laughs> right, you're gonna either lose the mechanic or you're gonna lose some feature of the game that another version would have exactly uh, just to uh to give a little memoriam for uh klaus tuber i wanted to talk about i've been meaning to talk about this for a while and this gave me a, a real reason to uh because i found it kind of fascinating how uh you know the the same basic game can then get translated into a bunch of different ways even though it's not really the same game. <laughs> so, uh, my question to everybody out there is, have you played Catan? Have you played the dice or the card game of Catan? And uh, if you have played the card game or some of the other versions, how did they differ from the main game? Uh, I'd be very interested if you let me know in the comments down below.